Hi, I'm Xavier. Ah, oh, man, I couldn't resist <laughs> again. Uh, you know that I love uh, vintage audio gear. Uh, especially, I'm especially interested into, uh, you know, magnetic recording audio gear. And uh, I really love uh, real-to-real recorders. And today, uh, yes, I have a new one in my lab. And this is not just a tape recorder. I'm really excited. This is... This is a Revox B77. Finally! <laughs> Revox. Um, you know, I had TIAC, um, I had Tascam, um, but uh, no Revox. Uh, but uh, yes, this is... The legendary uh, B-77. Uh, it was the successor of the very famous, if not legendary, A-77. And uh, that actually made quite some history. Uh, but, uh, you know, also this one is regarded as one of the most famous uh, Revox uh, uh, tape recorders uh, ever produced. Um, and... Uh, you know, it came out in 1979, so it's 42 years old right now. Uh, so, but still, still looks really, really good. And it also has the uh, little tape splicer on the side. So beautiful. Uh, but anyways, uh, Revox was the uh, consumer uh, division of uh, Studer. And uh, I would love to get a Studer uh, machine, but uh, those are quite inaccessible. Uh, but this one is the Mark I version, so it's the first version, and it's the low speed version. So I have already two uh, uh, real to real ta tape recorders. I uh, have the TIAC A3440 and the Tascam 38. They both go up to uh, 15 inches per second, which is really fast, it's blazing fast, but uh, you know, consumer grade hi-fi um, equipment back in the days, they all go uh, up to seven and a half inches per second. So this one is selectable between th three and three quarters and seven and a half inches per second, which is really good enough for hi-fi and uh, for uh, really good audio quality um, from tape. So this machine also has a very interesting story. So I got this thing from eBay, obviously an auction, and uh, the, the price was really quite nice. Uh, actually, got a very good deal on it because uh, you know the I contacted the owner obviously, and uh, he said that uh, he was the original owner. Uh, he got this thing. Uh, in the early 80s and he kept this thing all the way uh, till now uh, basically so uh, he rarely used the machine uh, over the years and uh, in 2017 so uh, four years ago right now uh, it it broke apart uh, really so he got this thing even repaired uh, and I got the the list of uh, this, the thing that have been done to this machine. Uh, some capacitors have been changed and uh, also has been calibrated four years ago. Um, but uh, then after the repair, uh, he never turned this thing on again. And, uh, you know, uh, four years of uh, of storage for a machine like this is not really good. You have to use those machines. Uh, those really need to be uh, powered on uh, time by time and uh, needs to be, uh, you know, used um, really because all the mechanical parts are, uh, you know, they they like to be used, <laughs> basically. So, yeah, I don't know if this thing works correctly or not right now. So it's nice how they actually thought about carrying this thing and they provide a little handle on the top. Uh, which is quite useless. I mean, this thing weights quite a bit, uh, 20 kilos or even more. So, yeah, I doubt you can carry this thing around with this uh, little plastic handle. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of cute. So, here is the money shot. <laughs> I really want to check uh, the, the little heads on the bottom here. So, this actually comes off 
like that. Just pull on it. And uh, wow, the heads are really quite quite large. So the the actual heads uh, they look really really good. And uh, I mean, this thing has been rarely uh, used. And uh, you know, you can actually see here. This is the the capstan, and uh, it's a direct drive motor right there, uh, which is very interesting. It has no belt inside, and uh, yeah, it's a very interesting thing. This just is a photo diode, which is very interesting. It's a photo diode that uh, tells the machine if the tape is present or not. All right, so uh, before powering this thing up, I really want to check uh, if everything is all right inside. I'm gonna actually clean uh, the, the, the internals a little bit, at least the mechanical parts. So yeah, I'm um, gonna remove the, the front panel cover here first. So this is uh, held down by those uh, five screws. So those three on the top and two on the bottom. You also have to remove the pinch roller here. So this whole panel should actually come off uh, as a whole unit. So this part is cleaned and uh, it's finished. Basically, I just cleaned everything with a vacuum cleaner and a brush to remove all the loose dirt. Then uh, I, you know, just with a uh, some isopropanol, I cleaned all the mechanical parts and uh, the tape path. Uh, so everything that comes in contact with tape has to be really, really clean and shiny. So yeah, also adjusted a little bit the brake the brake mechanism that was uh, dirty as well. So now it brakes properly. The um, the only two rubber belts are for the counter, and they seem to be fine. So I'm not gonna replace those. All right, so I removed the cover and look at this thing. It's just so beautiful. I love the design of uh, Revox and uh, Studer uh, open reel recorders like those. Uh, and, you know, I love the design. I, it's so tidy, so well done. And, uh, you know, look at just the cables. They are all nicely loomed together with uh, little cable ties and... Uh, uh, they used obviously a uh, little connector so you can actually service easily service this thing and um, You know you can disconnect everything and also the boards look uh, There's a motherboard on the bottom and those are all the uh, little amplify boards and also all the frame here it's all a uh, you know composed by pieces of uh, of uh, die cast aluminium and that's so <sighs> That's so sturdy, that's very nice. And that's why it actually weighs so much. <laughs> and they're using obviously uh, some uh, very big motors here. Uh, those are the hub, uh, the real motors. 
and this is the um, capstan motor and this is a direct drive motor so you can actually see the flywheel here is the rotor itself and uh, that's so well done I mean really hats off to the designers of this recorder you know this is the main transformer big huge linear power supply here very nice there is also a uh, an optional board here which is not fitted should be there but uh, it's uh, the slide sync uh, option and uh, it's not present in this uh, in this model but uh, you know here is the oscillator board uh, the recording amplifier the input amplifier the reproducing and monitor amplifier on the other side all right so I see uh, that somebody uh, was here before me uh, they replace some components and uh, they replace especially the uh, the trimmers uh, those look uh, to be uh, new new trimmers those are sealed type trimmers and uh, those were the old ones they uh, didn't replace every every trimmer on those boards but uh, you know those are the old ones and they are not sealed so dust and dirt and grime can actually build up here on the resistive part and uh, it usually uh, you know after all this time it uh, it breaks and uh, breaks content I'm surprised those are still good yes I measured them and uh, they're still good all right so I now have cleaned everything as uh, as much as I could and uh, is now shiny again and some people ask me uh, you know uh, why do I you know clean so well the internals of uh, you know electronics uh, electronic equipment and the reason why I do it is because I you know I found out that uh, that um, you know dirt over time can actually accumulate on uh, PCBs and uh, components and can sometimes uh, become conductive and uh, that's not a good thing and I had uh, two amplifiers and uh, even my Tascam 38 they had this exact problem all the dirt and the grime that was um, on the PCB on the main uh, board um, over time it actually became uh, conductive and it was a real pain in the ass to remove dirt and uh, an oil oily uh, substance that um, became conductive and caused a lot of problems on that uh, on that machine so yeah uh, that's why I clean everything so well all right so let's start by the uh, the board on the far right here and uh, this uh, is the monitor amplifier board there it is so this board is not just responsible for the you know monitor amplifier so the uh, the headphones uh, the headphone amplifier on the front uh, there are two connectors actually <laughs> uh, but also is responsible for the view meter amplifier so the view meter movement and also the uh, little peak indicators on the view meters so the uh, over modulation indicators and uh, also a very nice feature uh, that uh, you see um, very often in uh, high-end uh, amplifiers is uh, the delaying circuit um, for uh, you know to suppress uh, any on-off clicks when you turn the instrument on. Uh, so you have this little relay here with a capacitor and a delaying circuit that uh, when you turn the, the whole instrument on, uh, it actually delays the uh, the output. So you don't hear the, the clicks and the thumps when you turn on the instrument, which is a very nice feature. I really like it. All right, so next is this board here, which is the actual reproducing amplifier. All right, so this is the reproducing amplifier so this uh, this board here contains also uh, the uh, reproduce equalization and uh, the line amplifiers for uh, the the two channels and um, so the, the the signal from the uh, playback head goes right here gets amplified it gets uh, uh, all the equalization adjustments are here and uh, yeah 
also has the the bias reje rejection filter and the muting circuitry uh, so yeah the next board is the amplifier board and it's pretty self-explanatory uh, it's interesting there's a lot of unpopulated parts here but uh, you know uh, this board actually uh, takes care of the uh, impedance matching and uh, amplification when you select uh, your desired input. So next board, the recording amplifier board, and uh, that's so good. Look at the uh, the components layout here. It's so good. It's all symmetrical here. Obviously, this uh, provides the uh, driver stage um, for both channels and also the recording equalizers. Uh, so yeah, you can actually. Uh, uh, tune this thing um, to a specific uh, recording equalization by those uh, <laughs> by a lot of uh, resistors and uh, variable inductors here and uh, also this actually provides uh, this also has a 38 kilohertz MPX filter to avoid uh, beats um, with the bias frequency that's very important and also has an RF filter um, you know for protection. So last but not least is the oscillator board which is this guy right here which also has a little connector right there. So this is the uh, this actually looks very simple it is very simple it's just an LC oscillator uh, for the bias frequency and uh, which is uh, 150 kilohertz obviously it's very high so you can't hear it. So this board also controls the bias and raise currents, which are switched by those two relays, and uh, all the you know uh, the bias frequencies actually mixed in the uh, interconnection board, the audio uh, interconnect board. So yeah, it's all there. All right, so it's another day, and look at this mess. I mean, my benches are just full of things to be repaired and stuff. Oh man, so many things and so little time. So much to do and so little time. But anyways, uh, the replacement capacitor have just arrived, so it's right about time to do a complete change of capacitors and this beautiful machine. Oh, look at that beautiful blue dot. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Uh, anyways. Capacitor change. There we go. with my little eye a little refat capacitors those are very well known to fail quite spectacularly because those are usually across mains and uh, you know they usually explode on you as a re refat mini print uh, whatever but I'm gonna sure I'm gonna change this thing by the way this is the actual speed control circuit and, and takes care of regulating the speed uh, precisely uh, precisely regulating the speed of the capstan motor and uh, has also a feedback from the actual capstan motor which is the uh, taco head which is present on the capstan motor itself way better isn't it ah
Alright, so that's all the capacitors that there I replaced. And uh, I'm really glad to have replaced the capacitors because some of those are just uh they they spilled the, the, the electrolyte all over the place. Alright, so as you can see the machine is almost back together. <laughs> I mean it's open like that because I wanna do some um some basic checks and uh, adjustments in order to have a full function machi machine. I also, uh, during the uh, reassembly, I also cleaned all the knobs. As you can see, those are shiny again. And um, also cleaned the, um, the tape guides uh, with some abrasive paste in order to have you know, a very clean and smooth uh, surface on which the tape um, actually rub against. Now, you know, you don't want to have any rough edges or whatever. So, yeah, had to clean all the tape uh, path with isopropanol and uh, the tape guides with uh, some uh, abrasive paste in order to have a very smooth surface. All right, so I have the manual, so let's uh, let's begin. All right, so the the adjustments on the manual are all listed here, very nicely made. So the first thing is obviously power supplies, uh, checking the voltages. Uh, I have a test po test point here on the audio board, audio interconnect board, and the first one is the regulated uh, 21 21 volts, which should be plus or minus one volt. I'm reading 20.14 is a little bit low but you know it's it's all right then we have the unregulated 24 volts uh, which is on the tape transport board and I'm showing a 29 volts and it should be 24 to, to uh, 26 that's um, that's not correct so this means this actually means that uh, the um, mains voltage is set too low on the machine so I'm gonna actually turn it off and uh, uh, on the voltage line selector switch I'm gonna select the proper voltage which is not 220 uh, here it's actually quite higher than 230 so it's uh, sometimes I can actually go at up to uh, 240 volts so let me set it to 240 which is the correct voltage and uh, let's try again all right so now it's set to 240 let's turn it on again and look at that now it's showing correctly 26.9 still a little bit high but it's much better than 29 volts next measurement is the taco head yeah <laughs> the taco head adjustment <laughs> And um, so correctly positioned should measure a signal between 35 and 50 millivolts at three and three quarter inches per second. So I have my oscilloscope there. So sorry for the angle, but um, the lower one is the taco head. As you can see, if I select the higher speed, it goes way up. But uh, we're measuring at three and three quarter inches per second. It should be from 35 to 50 which is yeah it's showing correctly 35 sometimes yeah 38 yeah it's uh it's okay all right so the next thing is the tape calibration tape speed calibration so um says to connect uh the uh a counter or an oscilloscope in my case to tp1 and p5 i lost good 10 minutes on the diagrams uh, trying to find TP1 and TP1 correspond to P2 in the board which is a little connector there let me actually zoom in is that actually right there which is P2 on the board and TP1 on the schematic it's a little bit confusing that's a design kind of thing I I don't know it's a little bit confusing by the way so uh, P5 is just ground so the counter should read uh, 800 Hertz on both uh, speeds alright so I loaded the machine with tape and let's see if it's correct set to play 
and the frequency is right there you can actually see seven nine five eight hundred yeah it's jumping a little bit around but uh, you know it's it's within spec actually um, so let's uh, measure also the higher speed should also be 800 Hertz there we go 795 7935 it's a little bit low actually 5 Hertz low we could actually go and uh, recalibrate it a little bit I'm recalibrating the R14 uh, adjustable uh, resistor alright we are near 8 that's spot on 800 Hertz very good so I'm also checking the other uh, the lower speed and should be 800 spot on and it is 800 yeah it's jumping a little bit around but uh, it's 800 look at that beautiful alright so before continuing the adjustments I'm gonna do I'm gonna perform a very quick head demagnetization so I have my little funky uh, head demagnetizer here very quickly uh, you have to have your head demagnetizer uh, back away turn it on slowly bring this thing um, closer to the heads passes a few time and bring this thing back very slowly alright so now it's on pull it back and disconnect it alright so it's time now to adjust some uh, parameters uh, the first one is the gain of input amplifier so it says to connect an audio voltmeter to the output and I have the oscilloscope right there and an audio generator to feed the sockets out aux input and I'm generating uh, the audio signal by this uh, um, uh, frequency synthesizer and um, so the frequency should be 1 kilohertz and um, I will adjust the generator level until a reading of 0.775 volts is obtained on the audio voltmeter so on the oscilloscope and the required input level should be approximately 20 volts so as you can see on the oscilloscope, I have two signals. The first one is the output directly uh, reading the output of the uh, frequency synthesizer, and the other is reading the output of the machine. So, should be. Um, I already did a the the adjustment. Already checked uh, the adjustment, and it's reading perfectly 20 millivolts on the output of the synthesizer and 775 on the output of the machine so that's perfectly within spec alright so next thing is the view meter calibration and as you can see here are pretty out of spec <laughs> so that's not good um, so the, mm, the the audio generator is still adjusted to the same level and frequency 1 kilohertz and um, 20 millivolts output so I have obtained a 0.775 uh, volts on uh, the output of the actual machine so uh, the view meter should read 0 dB and I will adjust it on camera I'm gonna try at least let me see All right, so that's much better. Now I'm gonna uh, remove the camera and see uh, with my eyes uh, perfectly looking at the uh, meters so I have no parallax. So, yeah. All right, so now I will check the overload indicators and uh, it says that uh, 
uh, raising the signal level by more than 6 dB, uh, the overload indicators in the view meters must become illuminated. So let's uh, raise that. You can actually see the right channel being illuminated, but the left channel is not. So yeah, I will actually uh, alter the value of resistor R37 and R34 in the monitor amplifier. Alright, so those two are the two trimmers on the monitor PCB and uh, I'm gonna adjust the left one, so left channel one, so I will make the um, overload indicator light up again. Alright, so now I'm gonna perform a very quick uh, frequency response test before tape. So basically just a frequency response of the input and output amplifier uh, without the, you know, the tape. So, have my beautiful Hewlett Packard 3581C, a selective voltmeter, which is... Um, uh, you know, configure to sweep from 30 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and I have a uh, chart recorder down there, uh, which will actually um, draw a beautiful uh, frequency response chart, and uh, we'll see what's the frequency response of this uh, beautiful machine. Alright, so looking at the charts uh, that I produced, it's very interesting to see a non-linear behavior here from uh, 30 hertz to 1 kilohertz. Uh, it's um, down to minus 1 dB, and then we have a curve here that goes up to 10 kilohertz and then becomes very flat all the way to 20 kilohertz. And uh, that's the same for both channels. You can actually see that. And uh, that's beautiful, but uh, you know, it's within spec. It's zero dB at one kilohertz right there and minus one at 30 hertz. All right, so next two things are checking the voltages of uh, the array's head. So the oscillator voltages and RF frequencies and uh, the bias trap. Uh, check so on the recording amplifier. So I have my oscilloscope ready. It's uh, plug. It uh, it's actually connected to the head, uh, the raise head, and uh, so the frequency should be 150 kilohertz plus and minus five kilohertz, and um, the voltage should be. An RF voltage uh, from 30 to 32 volts. All right, so let's uh, put it on record mode. I also have another multimeter um, checking the bias trap. All right, so now right now is recording, and as you can see, it's uh, perfectly within spec. It's 151 kilohertz. <laughs>
All right, so isn't that beautiful? Look at that, that's so good. And uh, I'm really impressed by the quality, the construction quality, the, the mechanical quality, and also the electronics design of this machine. It's so good. And uh, bear in mind that Revox was the consumer uh, division of Studer. And, uh, you know, just imagine the, the quality of Studer machines and the, those must have been a state of the art back in the days and still are state of the art today because those are still used in studios around the world. So yeah, it's, it's really good machines. So this restoration took me uh, quite a bit, but uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, I'm really satisfied with the result. I uh, didn't do a full calibration of this machine just because I don't have, still, uh, I don't have the uh, um, proper sized, uh, you know, quarter inch calibration tapes for uh, this machine. So yeah, I couldn't do the full alignment. Uh, but also because you know the previous owner um, brought this uh, machine to to uh, a lab, so to be calibrated, and uh, all the mechanical part are still calibrated, are still good. So the head position, the head azimuth, those are all um, still within calibration. So yeah, um, I just uh you know did a uh quick uh check of the functionality of this machine and also adjusted the thing that i could uh without using uh calibration tapes so yeah but uh, the main thing was the uh full capacitor replacements because i think in my opinion it's it's a must on those machines because those capacitor have you know 40 years um uh, of of service so it's they're at uh, way, way um, past the, the useful life of capacitors. So, yeah, you should replace those. Uh, so, yeah, that's basically it for this video. And, uh, you know, if you have the opportunity of getting such a machine, it's, I highly suggest you get one uh, for a reasonable price, at least. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful machine. Just really really good so yeah as always thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye